Knight here with another special report. And admittedly, I haven't played a baseball game since the NES days. Roger Clemens MVP Baseball, Major League Baseball, Bases Loaded, Little League Baseball. So I'm basically an electronic baseball virgin because Roger Clemens Baseball is as much in common with MLB The Show as the original Metal Gear has with Metal Gear Solid V. For all intents and purposes, they're completely different genres. And because I have literally zero frame of reference, I didn't think it fair for me to review MLB The Show 23, but I figured I'd give my impressions as a lifetime baseball fan. New to America's interactive game, but not to the sport itself. So right off the bat, uh, no pun intended, let me address the elephant in the room. What in the name of Honus Wagner is Jazz Chisholm doing on the cover? This is a place of honor previously occupied by the likes of David Ortiz, Ryan Howard, Andrew McCutcheon, Miguel Cabrera. More recently, we had Aaron Judge, Bryce Harper, Fernando Tatis Jr., Shohei Otani, and Jazz Flippin' Chisholm. One of these is not like the other. The guy shows some dynamism in his short career, but he's pretty far from the best young prospect if that's the direction they were going, and he didn't even make the final cut for Rookie of the Year tallies. He's an extremely odd choice, no matter how slick his portrait. Anyway, rant over, let's talk about the game. And let me start with what I do know. I know it's more simulation than arcade style, more on that later, and since 2014 it's been the only baseball game on the market. Which is a darn shame considering the smorgasbord of baseball titles during the 8 and 16 bit eras. It was a golden age for interactive versions of America's great national pastime. I had a fun time with MLB The Show 23, but competition is always good for the consumer. It prevents stagnation, which is apparently what's been happening with Sony's homegrown baseball series. Now the show definitely isn't alone in this. Pretty much every sporting franchise has gotten a bit too comfy at one point or another. Even the granddaddy of all sports titles, Madden, has been stuck in a rut before. And from developer San Diego Studios' paltry list of updates, it seems like this was a very minor leap from 22 to 23, though there is one major addition which I'll discuss in a bit. I did appreciate how fully realized every home stadium is, quirks and all, and the backgrounds, grass and dirt look incredible. Within the first minute you feel this tremendous sense of immersion, like you were in the stands or watching at home. But the character models look basically the same year over year. Which is to say, good at a distance, but absolutely horrifying up close. The game does a great job modeling each individual player's body types, their basic outline and their unique mannerisms, the batting stances and pitching motions are spot on. Even a casual baseball fan can recognize the players from their own little idiosyncrasies. Just don't look at those faces. They're about as terrifying as the humans in the original Toy Story. He's pass, he handles the bat very well. I wouldn't be surprised. MLB The Show is a simulation, of course, and most of that comes via franchise mode, which is just ridiculously complex. For baseball nuts like me, it's a micromanaging dream come true. The game assigns responsibility for everything from trades to scouting, training, drafting, and setting your lineups. Every facet can be automated if you just want to pick up and play, but then franchise mode probably isn't for you. As for the game itself, you select pitches from every hurler's unique repertoire and try to avoid each batter's unique hot zones. If you're the kind of fan that could differentiate between sliders and splitters, between four seamers, change-ups, and breaking balls, you can make that work to your advantage. At the plate, you've got four different swing types. Normal, power, contact, and bunt. And in time, you learn to recognize what's inside the zone and what isn't. Though I have to say it's a lot easier to hit a home run than work a walk. After each swing, whether you do or don't make contact, you get rated on how early or late you swung the bat. And it's usually the good or perfect swings that produce hits. Occasionally, early or late ones. And on a perfect swing, just like in real life, you hear that satisfying crack. Swing and a ball lifted in the air, left field, pretty well struck. This one's got a chance, and that one is out of here. Once you get your timing down, it's actually pretty rare to swing and miss, at least as the batter, and most at-bats invariably end with a ground or pop-out or a base hit. Strikeouts are a lot less common than real life, 
unless you're the pitcher where even half-decent hurlers rack up the Ks. I took my sentimental favorites the Tampa Bay Rays through franchise mode, and I took part in a souped-up fantasy draft. Well, I must not have done my homework because I assumed you were drafting a starting lineup or maybe a 40-man roster, but you're drafting the entire franchise from starters all the way down to prospects. And right about the time I hit round 78, I got bored and let the system auto-draft the rest. And naturally, I drafted a team stacked with studs. Pretty much the exact opposite of Tampa. In real life, my first pick, Max Scherzer, makes two-thirds of Tampa's entire payroll. Scherzer would never in a million years be wearing a Rays jersey unless he paid for it. But if you don't want to suspend your disbelief too much, with, for example, the fourth lowest payroll somehow acquiring high-priced talent like Scherzer, Wheeler, George Springer, and several others, you can just go with the real-life rosters, and they're very much up-to-date, adjusted through regular updates. In the field, ground outs are darn near automatic, and on pop outs, the game is very generous with guiding you into the optimal catch zone, plus the optimal path towards getting to that zone. Like I said, 23 is a very minor upgrade over 22, but this year's edition does have a swell Negro League section that almost single-handedly warrants the purchase. The feature takes the form of individual missions, like striking out three batters, with an assortment of Negro League stars, some of whom, like Satchel Paige, made the switch to Major League Baseball. With narration by Bob Kendrick, the president of the Negro League's Baseball Museum in Kansas City, you gain a real appreciation for these early pioneers. And it's a real thrill to play as legends like Jackie Robinson, Ruth Foster, Buck O'Neill, and several others. The only part that doesn't quite stick its landing is the commentary. In a normal game, it's pretty generic, sticking to basic facts and the occasional bit of trivia for certain players. In the Negro League section, the same guys call the action, with them throwing in sporadic historical factoids, but for the most part, they call it like it's happening right now. And they're just as dull and even keeled there as the rest of the game. And the same is true for the crowds, which never quite seem real. They're always even keeled, more like white noise than a stadium filled with rabid fans. And apart from the home team's colors, they definitely aren't customized. For example, anyone who's seen a home game at the Trot knows about the prevalence of a certain musical instrument. I gotta have more cowbell. But you never hear it in game, nor any other regional quirks. The game did throw in each stadium's home run sound, like the Phillies' Liberty Bell or the Rays' horn, but strangely, it doesn't replay them for home wins like in real life. But nitpicking aside, Fans will love every moment of this, especially if you haven't bought a baseball game in a while. And the Negro Leagues is a great new addition. If you're still happy with 2022's The Show, it might not be worth the upgrade, but otherwise, fans owe it to themselves to check out MLB The Show 23. Thanks for joining me for another special report. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my televisual program, and I'll see you next time. This is Jimmy Midnight, signing off.